It's mind pump time. I love it when I scare the crap out of everybody. Anyway, uh, here's the giveaway for today. Maps Anabolic and the No BS Six Pack Formula. Both of these programs for free for one lucky viewer. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this podcast. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you do those and we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll win those programs for free. Now, here's why we're giving those away. Because all month long, those two programs are put together in a bundle on sale. So check this out. For everybody else, you can get MAPS Anabolic and the No BS Six Pack Formula together for $59.99. Lifetime access, you get the full programs. Super, super huge discount. If you're interested, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. What a great conversation right now to open this podcast up with Justin rocking that badass Dude, shirt. How sick is this shirt, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it looks really good Boom. on you. What yeah. size is that, by the way? Because it's a little <laughs> yeah. sh- it's extra small. It's a little yeah. tight. <laughs> well, the- that's the thing. I mean, it just hugs me because the material is so nice. You, you look beefier, and uh, I think you're, what's going on? What, what are you doing? I, I don't know, man. I'm just still working out. Just he just got back from L. He's been drinking beer and mosh pitting. <laughs> he, I didn't more, say fatter. More bloated. Yeah. Yeah. I said be- yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Look, you look bloated, bloated in the arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine? Yeah. You imagine saying, I've never in my life as a man said that to another man. Like, yeah. Dude, you look you, a little bloated. <laughs> <laughs> you called me out the other day for saying yeah, it. That might make me cry. Did you, what, did you, what did you say? You, when we were talking about my, my baths. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, I never wanted yeah, to well, unveil he, that he information. Asked about the, yeah, he asked about the, I know, I should have fucking, whoops. And so I just came right out of my mouth <laughs> like that. You know? You're just, way too honest, bro. Yeah, Some yeah. things you got to hold on to. And I, it's just bad because it's paired with the, the bath. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bubble bath going on <laughs> here. I'm sure you got a bath, a little, a little bit of water. I was in one last yeah. night, dude. I was in one last night. I had Monday night football going on on the counter, on the TV, and taking my little bath, my lights out. A little me time. Yeah, a little me time. That's good. No, fight for that. those as a dad now you fight for those times when uh, you, know, know, you know so my brother we do we can i want to i want to talk about the post that we got tagged on eugene Tao's squat post but before we do i have to tell a story yeah my brother right he just had a they, him and his wife just had a baby a few months ago cute little boy talked about this and his wife was you know we're, they were all talking and i'm gonna have to have a conversation with my brother because he's like i was when i first became a dad he doesn't like fully understand that he needs to help a little bit more like with the child rearing stuff. So mm-hmm. here's something that he did. She's going to the bathroom. So mom just had a baby two months ago. She's on the toilet going pee or whatever. He's playing with the baby and the baby starts crying. He walks into the bathroom with the cry baby and hands her the baby. I don't, <laughs> oh, know, what I don't do. know what to do. I'm like, bro, <laughs> you better figure this out before, <laughs> before your shit goes south. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, all right, so the, the squat post. This comes up a lot, dude. And you know what? Eugene Tao is a smart guy, so I want to say that. I like him. I like his post. He's a very smart guy. Yeah. But we got tagged on his post because he kind of did that social media thing, and he's smart about it where you counter something that's being said often, and it does get you a lot of attention. Well, he opens it up with, in my opinion. So right out the yeah. gates, you, you you get my respect, and I'm not going to debate that. It's his, his opinion. He's open yeah. to that opinion. I, I think we could argue the other side, but... He's not really saying the squat isn't valuable. No, he's, he's not. He's just saying that it's... That not necessary to develop big, strong quads. Or that, that machines have their value, is mm-hmm. what he's saying. That machines also have their value, which I agree. Yeah. I think all these tools have their value, but it is hard to find a single tool as valuable overall for the lower body um, as squats. It's it's hard to I find think, one. I think he's also trying to point out and address, which I also agree with, is this, you know, just over generalization that everybody should be squatting right away. Because the truth is, everybody should work towards that, I believe, yeah. and, and stand behind that. But I don't necessarily believe that everybody should be squatting because there's a lot of people that can't squat mm-hmm. with good technique and you risk injury. So I think he's covering that that kind of movement right now. Like we talk about how CrossFit really brought back the deadlift and the squat. And now you have everybody starting to do, you know, all these weekend warriors getting out there and trying to hit PRs mm-hmm. when they have terrible mechanics. And so I think he's trying to address that, which, and I agree with that. I think that um, everybody shouldn't just jump in there and start loading a barbell and trying to do ass to grass squat when they don't have good technique. But I think the thing where I will always defend the squat and where the problem I have with like a post like that is that it discourages, I just right away, I go back to, 
you know, teenage me or 22 year old me even. And I would read a post like that. Justified. From a, yeah. A really intelligent, he's a very intelligent coach and trainer. He looks amazing. He's strong. And look, I would, you know, if he was older or same age as me, I'd look up to him and go, Oh man, this guy, he tells me I don't need to squat. Like I would continue to avoid it. And, and that, I guess that's fine if all you want to do is develop your quads, but the squat ended up being so beneficial for me personally and clients that I've trained at the pursuit to get a good squat mm -hmm. because very few people can do a good looking squat. And there's a lot of things that are broken down mm -hmm. that it highlights that so well. And the, the pursuit of getting a good squat has so many benefits in itself versus throwing that person into a hack squat, a leg extension, a leg press. You don't have to address any of those deviations. Well, yes. and I read in his post too, he was kind of coming at a lot of the strength coaches for highlighting the, you know, a backloaded squat is like the gold standard of, you know, squatting. And, and in terms of like that being something that you lead up to inevitably, like kind of displaying the ultimate, uh, you know, strength of that, which I tend to lean towards. I'm, I agree. You with know, that. and I agree with that, whereas he disagrees with that and, and thinks that, you know, you can just. Um, you know, get the same kind of value out of of these machines if all, your goal is only to to have muscular development and and just focus yeah. on uh, hypertrophy and your aesthetics. But you know, I would still argue that uh, in terms of overall function, everyday life, and longevity, you're going to run into some real issues if that's all you're doing. Yeah, let's back up for a second. Okay, let's just talk about the squat without weight. Just being able to go down in a squat comfortably with good mobility and good control is a fundamental human movement. So let's imagine now 500 years into the future, we don't have to walk anymore. We're on these floating devices that take us everywhere. They're really good at what they do. And there's really no use to walk at all. And somebody comes across and says, maybe a, a fitness person in the future says, hey, there's a lot of benefit to walking regularly and learning how to walk. And people argue, no, 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 there isn't. I, you could do other strengthening exercises. You don't have to walk. There are more benefits to the to walking than just the fact that you're walking. It's part of how we evolved. Squatting is that as well. If you go back a thousand years and you couldn't sit in a squat, you were big time dysfunctional. In fact, go to third world countries and watch people working or resting. How are they doing it? In a squat position. They're not sitting on the floor. Why do they sit in a squat? Well, first of all, if you go to the bathroom and poop, and by the way, those squatty potties, why are those so effective for people? Yeah. Because that's how we pooped in the past. It puts your body in really good position. But why don't they sit on the floor? If you're out in nature, first of all, you're not that mobile if you're sitting down. It's hard to move to the sides. Number two, if you need to get up and move real quickly, well, now you're vulnerable to being attacked or by an animal or if your kid needs you or whatever. So they sit in a squat. In fact, yesterday I was going for a walk and one of my neighbors had their parents visiting and their parents were from, you could tell from, uh, you know, maybe a not as developed country. Mm -hmm. And I saw this <laughs> grandma, she was sitting outside and she was gardening in a squat. This is an old lady. She must've been 80. That's awesome. And she's sitting in a squat and she's gardening and pulling weeds and stuff. And that's, you know, we should be able to do that. So not being able to do something that's fundamental to our anatomy, mm -hmm. something that we evolved doing means that you're missing out on so much more than just developing your quads and your hamstrings and your glutes. Also a point, I don't remember the name of um, the uh, the guys, it was the body mechanics or the, we went down to LA oh, yeah. and we went and kind of visited them. They have real unconventional methods, but oh, right. one thing they highlighted about the squat was how, you know, it would depressurize your body. So right. you have a lot of internal pressure built up uh, that we don't necessarily always get rid of and, and we carry with us. And the squat is one of those positions that really helps to, you know, to, to be able to express all of that out. Yeah. I mean, it's how women gave birth. This is, this is how women gave birth for most of human histories. I would sit uh, in a squat. It's how we relaxed it. It's how we hung around each other. Uh, we didn't have chairs for, for a long time. We didn't have toilets for a long time. It's a fundamental human movement. And so what does squatting with weight do? It just strengthens this fundamental human movement, but you should be able to do this anyway. And if you can't, avoiding it is a big problem. And that, can, that's, can you develop nice quads and hamstrings and stuff not doing it? Sure. 
But what are you missing out on? A lot. You're missing out on a lot. By and that's the, that's the main problem I have with this stance is, is not that he's not right. Like, I don't, the way he worded everything and he set it up, I don't disagree. Well, he's a good, he's smart. He yeah, knows what he's saying. I do not disagree with what he's saying. The only thing that I have to say about posts like that is it discourages a lot of people that should probably learn how to squat. That's mm -hmm. it. It's just, and I, and I, I can know that because I was that kid. I would love to hear that, that I don't need it because it was hard and I was terrible at it, you know, and I, I it hurt my low back when I did it. And so, yeah, okay, I'll just avoid it and I'll leg press and do all these other machines. And yeah, that got me by for a good 10 years of training. But when I started to address all those issues that kept me from, you know, that limited me from doing a good squat, the overall benefit that I got from Your low back pain went away. Yeah, completely. So, yeah. and then, and what I've seen that for clients, you know, I get a client that just can't perform a squat and I point out all the reasons why they can't. And now, and that's our, that's the way we measure. We don't get on the hack squat and go like, oh yeah, that was a good hack squat. You know, like, no, I have a squat that I saw the way you squatted or I videoed it or took a picture of where you were. And now we've worked towards that. And now we can go back and, and it's hard to do that with a machine and yeah. be able to be like objective. Totally. Yeah. Well, I just, for me, it's, I like to look at the body holistically and all the systems systems holistically and the movements holistically. And so uh, to avoid something that is the ultimate expression of that with a backloaded squat, I think, you know, I have problems with that. It, you know, segmenting it out and like, you know, taking each one of those movements and just isolating certain muscle groups and trying to build and develop those, you know, there's definite value to that, uh, especially if you're not getting a lot of response out of certain muscle groups. Uh, but in terms of like addressing the overall performance of your body, uh, we, we need to really incorporate those compound lifts. Yeah, agreed. Now, speaking of holistic, I got I guys, I got to tell you guys, I am slowly getting my dad to incorporate a lot of the stuff that we talk about. So you yeah, guys know no, how I talk. I've a few things now. I have. And um, because each time I tell him to do something and he does it and he notices, now each time I tell him something else, he's way more like confident. Like, I'll give that a try. Yeah. So now I got my dad trying uh, Felix Gray glasses ah. at night. Yeah. So over the weekend, so he calls me up on Friday and he's like, hey, Sal, um, what are you doing tomorrow? So I know he's okay. He's gonna he's gonna need something. So I'm like, well, I'm not doing much. You know, what can I do for you? And he goes, well, there's a motorcycle that I want to go look at because I might buy it. It's in Santa Barbara, so I want to drive there and back tomorrow. I'm like, oh my god, dude! Right? <laughs> you want to drive all the way down there and back? Like, but my dad is the kind of person he never says no to me when I ask him for something. So I can't say no to my dad. Plus, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. to hang out. So we got in the car and we drove. And we had great conversation the whole time. And my dad talked, told me how he's been waking up like at 2 or 3 a.m. just awake. And he's like, I don't know what the hell it is. It's like, I can't get any better sleep. And I, I said, you know, are you watching TV? Or are you on your iPad right before you go to bed? And he goes, yeah. And so I explained how the brain, you know, needs time to know that it's nighttime and it doesn't produce as much melatonin. And so I said, if you wear glasses that block the blue light, it should help you with your sleep. So I gave him a pair of Felix Grays and he's trying them out. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'll he know. He hasn't reported back yet, has he? Hasn't reported back yet, but I'm I'm a, I, I'm assuming he's going to, like everybody else, he's going to have good results from that. You so. know what, you bringing up Felix I just remembered, I wanted you to look into, so you guys know that they have a supplement oh, now. I saw it. It's called Insight. Yep. I actually had somebody ask me about it. I had no idea. They're like, hey, what do you think about the Felix Gray supplement? I'm like, Felix Gray supplement? You mean their glasses? They're like, no, yeah. they have a supplement now. So they put, so it's a it's a supplement that has astaxanthin, lutein, and zeaxanthin, and then bilberry fruit extract. So these are all compounds that have been shown to reduce uh, basically eye damage from UV rays to maintain eye health, hmm. reduce inflammation, and they're all proven in studies. So it's a it's an eye health supplement. You know what's funny is I had one client, actually the, one of the clients I trained the longest, I trained this woman for 13 years, Mondays at 3 p.m., every Monday at 3 p.m., Carol, uh, love her. And she had, um, God, I can't remember now off the top of my head. What do they do when they replace the, whatchamacallit in your eye? Cataract Thank surgery. You. So she had cataract surgery. And these compounds are what her eye doctor used to, And she would take them separately. Oh, interesting. All the time, yeah, to, 
to keep maintaining the health of rice. So these are all proven compounds. I think it's interesting that they're getting to the supplement market. That Do you know? I thought so too. Do you know what? Uh, which ones of those? Like, I don't know what foods you would you'd eat to get those. Some of them like sound so foreign to me. I don't know if I've even. I don't know, know. You know, that's a good question. I don't like know. your ca carrots are what are right. known for eyesight, carrots right? So what is what's the, what's what's in what's dominant in carrots that is? Well, I think they say that for vitamin A. Yeah. Uh, is because, that why? Yeah, but uh, these are more. These are different. They're not essential like vitamins or micronutrients, rather they're antioxidants and compounds that have been shown to have eye health benefits in, in their own right. So, and what's interesting is they also have other benefits. So those all have lots of health benefits aside from helping the eyes. So it is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder if this is going to be much more and more valuable because eye health oh, seems yeah. to be degrading because of how much we're so using much screen time. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's on how and many, just you know. inundated with blue light constantly. So yeah, I think if they can find any angle uh, in that direction to kind of address it, I think it's going to be valuable. Yeah. Now I did want to ask you something, Justin. Uh, I noticed you had a, a couple, uh, like look like you scuffed your hands a little bit. <laughs> I know you went uh, to, I know you went to Alabama. <laughs> yeah. You went to no, Alabama no for fights. a heavy metal, what was this like festival? Like I want to, I want to hear all about this. Yeah, dude. yeah, dude. So okay, I saw it, Kill Switch Engage was there. Yeah, That's so one that band was that I would have liked to listen. Probably to one of, of the only like familiar bands yeah. I think <laughs> that people would recognize. Uh, and so I guess you, you'd you'd call this genre kind of hardcore metal or hardcore. Metal. It's not even death metal. It's um it it's more on the hardcore side because they have like uh, kind of a punk. Um, so like East coast hardcore, it's like a lot of the guys are like straight edgers and it's like, it's like a gang. Like, so there's this whole culture around this kind of stuff. That's very like unique, uh, to this specific genre. Like we don't do drugs, but we'll yeah. kick your ass over it. Exactly. Somebody smoked a cigarette. Like they would like beat them up like that kind of a <laughs> really? thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, it was crazy. Straight edgers are crazy. So what is that? Okay. Yeah. You're going to have to school me on all this. I don't know yeah. any of this. What, what is a straight edger and what makes a straight edger different than a, a death metal guy? Straight edgers are, well, they're usually into like the hardcore scene more, which is like, um, it, it, it's a tighter community. It's like, um, I mean, it, what, the what, shows are different. But what, what, they, what does straight edger mean? What straight edge just means that you don't do drugs, you don't smoke. Oh, that's what that means. Do... So is that why you said that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Like yeah, they, yeah. They've taken like, I'm not going to do drugs and they've made it. Like a gang, yeah. Almost. Well, and, and so it's like they have all this what like boring crazy energy now. <laughs> like, where are they gonna pour it? They gotta like, uh, you know, turn into <laughs> violent outlets. I guess uh, <laughs> we're so, angry because we're not high. So it spoke to me as a kid. So. No drugs or alcohol at this thing. No, there was. It's oh, just okay. They, okay. So there's there's just for commercial reasons we tell that. everybody we're straight edge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the bands are straight edge. People going were probably people go like well in some and they they build followings that um, you know are part of like certain bands have shows together where it's like a whole bunch of straight edgers really? or like yeah or guys that are just into the hardcore kind of punk scene uh, and then like there's mixed in with that has been like uh, metal and then also like like Christian metal and then this other kind of um, you I want to hear Christian crazy, metal no yeah. like red. Red's one of those bands. You've I know you know Red, don't you? Red? Yeah, yeah. You've uh, uh you were with me one time when we were in Vegas and I heard him play. I'll play Oh it. maybe, yeah. I'll uh, play a song for you guys. I so like their Living Sacrifice is one of those, uh, and also uh, Beloved, which we put on an amazing show. Like I did so little background. So for me, like I was I was basically like this angry kid and That's weird. I remember yeah. <laughs> So I had issues, like psychological issues, like that I just, you know, would bury. And then my outlet was like metal, dude. So I was not allowed to play anything with swear words or anything in my house. And, you know, my, my parents were very much, you know, very strict. And so I found a hack and that was Christian metal. And so like my first band was like the Crucified and they didn't play. But uh, the next one from there was Living Sacrifice. And it, they are so heavy. It just like people like had no idea. Like they Jesus were going, loved you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, oh, yeah, I just can't help but think like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's, an oxymoron, bro. It, it is. It's like that, but like they started to get really good. It started out some cheesy bands, right? And you'd be embarrassed to like say that, like, oh yeah, like I love these guys. Like I go to their shows, but they started getting really good and like popular. Uh, and, um, uh, so anyway, so there was like, some of those bands were there and, and that's why I was excited to go because it was like part of my childhood, mm. you know, growing up with these bands and there's like a very, very small scene of people that really 
get it and had similar issues as me growing up, I think. Did you, uh, now, did you mosh pit? Did you get in the mosh pit? So I, I was like, I wasn't going to do it, but I can't help it, dude. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to do it. I was Shut like, up. I knew, dude. You knew you were going to go to you the brought your I mean, mosh and shoes and everything. Bro. I don't act like mosh and shoes. Dude, I, was, <laughs> I was ready to go, dude. I was armed and ready to go. Uh, yeah, I, I got up to, well, I, I couldn't help it because some of the bands just like, it's just, it's almost like memory lane. And then you're like, oh my God, this song. And it, you know, and then, so the thing <laughs> about hardcore, song. yeah, this is my song. They have, breakdowns the most vicious breakdowns like regular metal shows they just play really loud and it's good music whatever there's like circle pits so the thing about these pits that are different is like people just go fucking nuts like they they start punching the air kicking stage diving like Did you say someone lost you. an eye somebody lost I, this is what i heard from one of the forums that uh they they talk later about you know how the like, shows so you, went has anyone seen yeah. a blue eye I've been <laughs> do you even know how, you know if that guy's okay that they carted off uh that was like holding his eye was all blood everywhere uh and so yeah so so mayhem did happen and i was definitely involved in some of the bigger pits there but the thing is if you know what to do and you know like sort of your spacing and if there's you're a code big, if you're a big beefy strong as big shit. pit guy well yeah, i mean it's a new there, shirt yeah there's that there's that i mean people in there aren't really like looking to to hurt other people it's just more of like this weird like crazy violent dance outlet thing yeah. I, I don't know how else to describe now it. did you yeah. did you did you get hit did somebody did you hit somebody oh, like what happened dude i have no idea but like i i was like I, I was like just seeing it before it happened. Like I, I was, you know what it was like was when I, when I do those heart swings out there at the, the Indian clubs, like I was like, my arms were like this almost in like a blender. And I was like blocking everything, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, just it was, it was amazing, sales pitch dude. I was like, no, clubs. no, no. He was in the forest, bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's cl close your eyes. Yeah. Trust your feelings, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was getting inside this. <laughs> This energy field, <laughs> you okay? I'm That's so, so awesome. I, yeah. I, I'm so fascinated by the 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 genres within the genres here. I just yeah. I would just say death metal's death metal, and it's anything that's like beyond. Like there, to me, there's like a heavy metal, which I think uh, Metallica, Pantera, Adam yeah. Car and Then there goes, <laughs> yep. and then they just goes. Everything is but after that. They're is, like thrash. I feel but, like yeah. everything after that is death metal. Yeah. Just, Adam characterizes it as I understand, and then everything else. I don't and then understand. this is completely <laughs> gone. Yeah, like I started with like yeah, what people popularly know as metal, and then I went i kept getting more and more like into it yeah. and finding out there's a lot of levels uh to this game now, so. now let me ask you this because yeah. I, I i know that there's a lot of stereotypes uh, with a, actually any community mm -hmm. now i've never been to a metal concert i've never been in a mosh pit but i have met because i like that kind of music to lift to that's the only kind of music i i, I, I that's the only time i listen to it is when I'm working out really hard mm -hmm. and I've met other people who are like super into that kind of music. And at first I was always shocked by how friendly everybody, oh, yeah. I thought like there would be this angry, whatever the coolest people ever. And that's just my personal experience. What's it like going to, is it like that 100%. or does it feel like really? It, it was like, it, it was this weird, surreal kind of love fest. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I swear to God, it was like violence everywhere, but everybody was like, I was picking up dudes that fell, you know, and slipped on some beer or something, and like, we're, we're getting pummeled, and I'm like, we're all just stopping it, we pick them up, we throw them back in, you know, <laughs> it's just like, it's one you of those okay? things, yeah. you're all right, oh, you got a couple, you know, bloody nose, keep going, you know? Uh, but we look out for each other. It's 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 a strange, like unique community. Now, but is everybody's it, super cool and nice. Is it a total sausage fest? Because I have a tough time thinking there's gonna be girls <laughs> yeah, there. Dude. It's such a sausage fest. But there's, I, and I'm always baffled at the, 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 the girls that, that go. Right <laughs> <laughs> What'd you it's, say? It's the good kind of sausage. <laughs> it's the good kind of sausage. Yeah, it's the spicy sausage. Do you, yeah. But do you see any girls at all? Yeah, dude. There was girls, of there. There was girls and there, there was one like in the pit, and she was like this this tiny you know cute little girl that was just like ah, like like really into it and and it's just funny because like the rest of us are like okay let's let's kind of make a wall around her so she doesn't get like nailed you know like so you want to hear something so so we're all like looking out for her not to get like punched so i used to have there was this girl that trained very short period of time and she was a total metal head and she would go in these and she was tiny she was like 90 pounds this little tiny thing mm -hmm. tatted up and whatever yeah super cool chick and I asked her that. I'm like, don't you feel like, is it, aren't you scared going? And she goes, no. She goes, it's the safest I ever feel mm -hmm. is when I go to these concerts because all the men there, 
become super protective of me. Is mm -hmm. that what it's like? One hundred percent. Yeah, that's wild, dude. Yeah, it is funny. Yeah, everybody's just tatted. I was like, it's so good that like I'm too old now. And and, and speaking of old, everybody there was over forty easily. Oh, really? There was no kids. Was that because okay. most of these bands started a long time ago? Yeah. Okay. They're all angry for different reasons now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my wife, taxes. Oh, oh, fucking. You know, yeah, we're raging about taxes. I can't and, connect with my you know, son. Mandates. You know? and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we're raging about now. That's you know, like people driving too fast. <laughs> <laughs> my lawn died. Now, now, be honest, right? Because, <laughs> I mean, obviously there's some nostalgia there and stuff like that, but... Uh, when you decided that you were going to do this, because sometimes I do stuff, right, that uh, I remember I love so much, uh -huh. and it's been decades since I did it, and then I do it, and then I'm kind of like, that'll probably be the last time I ever do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I think I could check that off as I'm done with that now. Like, wh wh how did you feel about it like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was some some of those kind of moments. Like, um, I, I know... Uh, in terms of like trying to get into everybody and like be in the crowd and all that, I was just like, Ugh. like I would rather be in the pit cause it's open. But for the most part, I was cool just standing off to the side and like watching and enjoying the, the actual madness of the music. It's it, and, and I totally recognize that it's like a lot of people on the outside will just look at it as just screaming and noise, you know, <laughs> like I totally admit that I'm like, yes, like that's totally part of it. But there's so many like if you are into it, like you hear all the differences of it and like who does it well and who has like, you know, real good musicianship behind it. Uh, and so I was I was definitely more like less less about like getting in there and getting my energy out and like more know, so analyzing more so analyzing it and then pulling myself back and being like, oh, this is why I love this band. So what? OK, so then what are some ways that uh, I know like, oh, this guy's generic or he sucks or like mm -hmm. what like what what are things that make it stand out as okay. like yes good question um yeah so <laughs> there's definitely bands out there that will overuse fuck all the time mm. and, and they they it's just a power word y yeah dude it's a cheap trick you know it's yeah. it's it's one of those things they're gonna get an emotional response from the crowd and be like fuck yeah let's fucking do this fuck 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 and like bro like you don't have to overuse it, you know, like, <laughs> like save it for the impactful moments or, you know, let your music like do that. I was always respected the bands more that their music was, would, would kind of like take you on this journey and then it would peak so hard that like everybody would go berserker because you'd hit this like moment where you'd see, and this happened with uh, uh, August Burns Red. It was like one of the best bands that played. They're just so tight musicianship that um, it got to a point where everybody knew this breakdown was coming. And all of a sudden I was getting pushed and everybody was getting pushed aside and it, w it opened up. It was like the biggest uh, pit. I had to like, it took me like five minutes, it seemed to run all the way around <laughs> and get to the other side because it opened up so big. I just so picture, wait, so wait I just a second. So when running the, across I was the running like this. <laughs> and I like lowered my shoulder into somebody and locked them down, so pick them back up. As the concert climaxes, <laughs> so does the mosh pit hole? Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it peaks, dude. And, and it's then like, the whole well, grows bigger. It's like this emotional release. That's what music like, does. Ah! You know that. That's what music does. It gets everybody to feel together. You know that. You've been to country music concerts where everybody starts. <laughs> well, I mean, similar. you have. Yeah, yeah, you know. I yeah. I, I, so I have. I've actually been to all of it. I, and I, I would actually, I'm trying to think where, where you would categorize uh, some of these bands that I've seen. But I don't even remember. I would think they'd be more punk. So you have punk. You have heavy metal. You've yeah. got so punk in in the hardcore is very similar because, um, it, so so punk does a lot of these anthem chants and things where they get crowd involvement. So uh. they're they're a lot better at like bringing the crowd like even on stage and they let like mayhem happen. So the hardcore bands, you see guys just like backstage running and almost hitting the lead singer and pushing and jumping and stage diving. And then, you know, people are climbing up and then grabbing the mic and singing the anthem with them. And, you know, they're like in the crowd, uh, you know, letting them be completely a part of the show. Oh, wow. So it's, it's, it's a totally different kind of mentality, but it's cool if you're like, that's your scene. Yeah. Uh, but if you're just, you know, in the back listening, it sounds like shit. Yeah. <laughs> I would have, I would have loved it. I think that would have been awesome. It, it's, it. it's fun. I wouldn't you know, have if done you love the band and they're interacting with you. It's super fun. Now, did your buddies go in the mosh pit with you? Uh, so my one buddy did. The other one was like, he was the, the sort of smart one, but it was funny because 
he went up to kind of watch the band close and I was watching cause I was taking a, a, a breath from my, I didn't want to get in the pit and he kept like pushing me in the back. And I thought it was just some random person kept like nudging me, like push, push. And then the third one, he pushed me real hard and I almost went in and I turned around like I'm going to punch somebody. Oh it, my was, God. it was him. And I'm like, oh, you got me. But <laughs> <laughs> he, was trying, he was trying to stoke me, you know? Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> almost got me to kill someone. Oh, I almost just punched somebody. Did, now, did you see any, other, any more of Alabama or was it just that? No. I mean, we went to like a... Um, uh, bar that was close by that had this like cool like sort of beer garden uh, just to catch a breath of fresh air and like mm. you know but no there wasn't really a whole lot else going on but I mean beautiful weather it was like 70 degrees and breezy awesome yeah you, yeah, would, I, you, I, would, you would go to one of these I would just watch it's, just, I find it so fascinating yeah, yeah. it would be really interesting to watch you at a concert yeah, yeah. yeah. well I'm not a huge concert person Dude, if, people yeah. watching was how, off the wait, how was it that's not <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's <laughs> that's the worst fist pump ever I mean, seen in my life I feel like, you look like, I feel like that would be like the universal move for all all concerts that I would bring you to no <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, so, you, so I had an experience like you said where you do something when you're younger and then when you're yeah, older yeah. you go I did that in an EDM concert so I was in my mid 30s and there was like this big EDM thing that happened in mm -hmm. San Jose. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'm like, I like EDM. You guys know that. EDM. So here's a funny thing. I love perfect for death this. metal. Yeah. And I like EDM, which it's, yeah, I don't know if they go together. Right. But I went to an EDM concert and I'm and we're in there. And right. I'm looking around. I'm like, wow, I look like a narc. Like either I'm a drug dealer <laughs> or I'm a narc. Hey, kids, you got some drugs? Yeah, because I'm, I'm the only person over 25 in this yeah. whole place. So. <laughs> Dude, that's uh, that's, that's funny. Yeah, like I and I got called out for, and I know it was kind of like uh, people aren't into what I'm into, like in terms of like kind of displaying the concerts and like, <laughs> like you're worse than one of those like, uh, you know, girl in, in fishnet going to EDM concert, you know, just like showing us all the the concert. And I'm like, <laughs> what when you were doing the My Pump Media page? Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, people <laughs> hating. I was getting called out on. I know. Wait, I would you, like to see you, you in the mosh pit. Was there? Anybody? I know. I have I have some footage. I'll I'll, I'll make sure and oh, add it. Any yeah. uh, I mean, it's a big concert. Any mind pump listeners actually listen to that music too? Yeah, yeah. So I didn't think anybody did, <laughs> especially from the response. We have cool, come on. Let's say we have cool fans. Let's yeah, be there's, of course there, they do. There's some hardcore people out there, dude. Uh, I ran into like five people. Uh, one, wow. One of them, I, I forget her name, but she. Uh, it was great because she saw me and was like, "Oh, I've been to one of the live events." And uh, and then she actually used that to uh, you know cut in line. And uh, you know, get a drink because I was in in this line for like an hour. And she found out she's not in a line. She's like, "But I know you." And then, uh, so I call her out for that. But uh, you know, smart. You know, smart. I knew what you were doing. That's awesome. Just so you know, I, I want to see the video of you in the mosh pit so bad. Yeah, that I thought like you did post a video. I I'm not sure if I posted the one where I was actually in because my friend was filming it. And, uh, yeah, I think he did, dude. You don't remember that? I, didn't, I must have not seen it. You don't want to pay attention? Oh, I was, again. I was, you don't, yeah, you don't, I was watch, down, you don't watch either one of our stories, do you? Huh? Just your own. Huh? No, I watch, I watch no, your stories sometimes. <laughs> just, that's not just true. a meme guy. <laughs> that's not yeah. true. Anytime you post something with your son, I comment. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. anytime. Okay. Yeah, I don't want if you're not, if you're by yourself. Boring. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, there's the baby. Yeah, where are you? Hey, oh, look at the baby. Hey, yeah. Speaking of memes and picking on you right now, please tell me you saw the mind pump memes. Uh, one of you. Oh my god, that dude. was so good. <laughs> I, that's my is this favorite one. one. Of these shirtless ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, wow. get, Sal getting Bro, ready for the podcast. I, I got really <laughs> uncomfortable watching that. Oh my god. It looked, so it looked, nice. it looked, it looked way on, dude. And then his grill. And his <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That yeah. was the best one yet. I mean, it looked it looked pretty spot Bro, the, on. The tech it on did. that—that's an app, right? You just use a freaking app. Yeah. If you didn't see his grill, you I would think you would think that was you completely. Dude. It was so good. The, the tech is getting so Bleach weird. Tips. Yeah. You, you guys Bleach realize this is scary. It, we're like ten years away yeah. from it getting so good. That I won't know the difference between you and that's and wild. That's gonna be weird, bro. That's gonna be cool. I know. That's gonna be strange. I, I bet you it's gonna be the future of you know, you talked about uh the evolution of like uh political cartoons and memes, right? Like memes are like this new thing. Watch that be the thing. Like it'll be, you know, making these videos of your buddies and friends all the time will be like the new thing to do. Oh. Because it's so good and accurate, be like, oh look at I caught you doing this, and you know, it'd be like funny <laughs> shit. That's gonna go. Well, I'm I'm thing. just afraid how it'll be used against people. You mm -hmm. know, like someone wants to fuck with Wait, you. You think politics right away? Of course, yeah, I yeah. think of all that. The so thing. Speaking of which, they, did you? Okay, so trip off this, right? So they invented. You ready for this? Hmm. Tiny, tiny flying machines, smaller than a grain of sand. Hmm? Wait. These are microchips that glide and fly in the air, and they report back information. And so scientists have created literally. Dude, they could like enter you. 
Literally, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> you didn't yeah. think of that immediately. Yeah. No, no. They have like little uh, <laughs> mini propellers. I mean, no, they have like little. Zzz. They have like little wings. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up right now because it's, it's yeah, dude. It's 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 trippy. Now the way they want to use it. So these are called micro flyers, and they think that they can fl throw them in the air. Doug, I want to see a picture and of this. monitor pollution, airborne diseases, environmental That's not contaminants. Why they created them. <laughs> yeah, they could provide. They could form a massive wireless network, gathering mm. important and, va and valuable environmental data. Do what? So, but I'm just thinking, like, dude, they could th they could spread these all over the air and just watch just everybody. Like and, locusts. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Smaller cool. than a grain of sand, and you're—I didn't even think they could go inside you, but now I'm freaked out. Yeah, like they make them any small, you breathe it in. Yeah, you know. Easily. Next thing you know, you have a, a manufactured uh, disease. Or how something like that. how tiny are the people that have to build these things? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> Little Keebler elves, <laughs> right? Yeah. A, a normal, a normal person with yeah. normal hands can't build stuff no, like that. It's not, engineering not possible. Just children, children <laughs> build. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's, that's a, it's a great point, Adam. That, that's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's pretty crazy. Is that what it looks like right there? I don't know what the hell that was. What is that, Doug? Yeah, that's what they are, micro flyers. Yeah, dude. I didn't wow. even think of that though, Justin, because that's interesting. I wonder if they could have you inhale <laughs> something like this, and then it could report back or deliver medicine. Yeah. To the body. I know that at some point they'll be able to make, you know, nanotechnology they'll be able to inject into your body. Well, that's sort of the real futuristic kind of uh, stuff out there that they're making breakthroughs with, which like is, I, I it's going to change the whole landscape, but I, I hope it's for the best. But, yeah. you know, my skeptical brain is always yeah, there it is right there. Alarmed. Look how, look how small those are right there. Doesn't that feel like uh, like superhero technology? Oh yeah, yeah. And the, how you gonna attach attach something on it that actually records to report back? It's a microchip. That's a microchip right there yeah, that can that's fly. So small. Yeah, I love Adam's skepticism. By the way, yeah. Adam, it's, it's not it, true. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just immediately not true. I didn't say it's not true. I'm just curious <laughs> yeah. to how this works. It that makes no sense to me. That's wild, man. Yeah, Do you see? I think I added in the thread too that there was this other spotting of like a military um, spaceship. What that uh, like. They're like, oh my god, this has to be like a UFO. Where? Yeah, so it was. In, okay, this is not a valid source, right? It's Sun. I think that's one of those where oh, it's yeah. like those Wolf Boy, Wolf Boy, and yeah. yeah. But it was loaded on this truck, and this guy was taking a video, and it looked, it looked possible like it could be made, like it's so you know like a stealth bomber, but it was like even more aerodynamically crazy. Uh, so I don't know if you can pull it up or not, uh, Doug. But yeah, it. It looks like it's it's feasible. So I'm like, wow, I wonder if they're getting even more advanced in that direction. So here's what I always wonder with stuff like that. Whenever stuff leaks out or somebody like a normal bystander films a military thing and it goes out, I wonder how much of that is manufactured. Right. You know, because I have to admit, I have to think, excuse me, that the military would be better than like driving a spaceship on the freeway some dude can film. I wonder how much of this is them flexing on other countries of kind of course. in a, in a yeah. sideways way. Like, yeah. Look what we got. Or making you think that this is glance. all we have when really we have five steps ahead of that. Yeah. That's what I, mean. I think. Because I think it's more likely that like anything that we hear about, we're, we're far more advanced Well, than dude, that. you guys know that the, okay, so the first war in Iraq, uh, Desert Storm, I think that was what it was called. When was that? Was that 1991, Doug? When we went was Desert Storm? <laughs> yeah, Storm? Yeah, far I back? think that's about correct. The first one. Right, this mm -hmm. Bush Senior, right? Yeah, we go in there. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, before and, Iraqi freedom, right? Or, yeah, um, and that was the first time we unveiled the stealth technology, stealth bombers. Before that, nobody even knew that they existed. And it had been around for like fifty years before that. We, or something. I think we created them in the seventies. Yeah, 60s. it was it was a long time ago. Yeah, and so it was like here's something cool that we made thirty years ago. So what the? What I mean, what do they have now? That's yeah. why I feel like some of the stuff that they're doing with UFOs is their sideways way of saying, by the way, we have technology that can go super fast underwater, above water, mm -hmm. do all this weird stuff. So, you know, if you mess with us or whatever. Right. Did you guys see the post that Joe Rogan did? He did the, the footprint. You didn't see that? What? Pull up, pull up his Instagram. I, think it was his I saw last. his freedom. Uh, rant, no, no. I thought. I mean, which I thought this was is great. stuff that Justin and you are way more into. That's why I thought for sure you guys would have already seen it. It was like, it just, it I came. I might have seen it. Yeah, is it, it was like a footprint that dates back further than what we we think homo, homo sapiens were on Earth. Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. What did I say? Homo. 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 <laughs> Homeostasis. Is Homeostasis where I was going. and people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look at. Wow. Oh, human. Oh, in the Americas. Okay. So, a uh, human footprint found in New Mexico are about twenty five thousand 
years old. Wow. What the hell? That's great. Did you guys know? I just learned this to, the other day. So we know Neanderthals, right? So Neanderthals, and then you have like, you know, modern humans, which appeared, I think, you know, around 10,000 years ago, there were like seven or eight other, maybe seven other human species that yeah. all started to disappear. There's yeah. like seven or eight of them. There's like the They're red- like bred out. There's like the red deer people of China. There's the Denisovians. There's the Neanderthals. Yeah. And the Denisovians, like they said, they crossed the Great Bering Strait yeah. and then made their way to the Americas. So there's all these different- types of humans okay. and many of them displayed intelligence many of them displayed art and tool making but basically modern humans uh and, the, and here's the the theory because modern humans have the dna of all of these so different parts of europe asia africa you'll see more neanderthal more denisovian more whatever right <clears throat> They think because that DNA is in our DNA that we we killed we banged them and killed them. So mm -hmm. basically, we outcompeted them, probably because we were better at making weapons and war. It's just like that game, murder, marry, kill. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And we, but we also, you know, mated with them. But so they say that we're the ones that killed them all off because we oh, outcompeted them. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. I didn't realize there were that many. I always thought there were like yeah, two or three. Yeah, I know. Lots of different species. Wow. Yeah, isn't that interesting? That is very anyway, interesting. Anyway, hey, uh, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Organifi. I've been using the gold juice super consistently at night. Mm -hmm. In fact, I ran out of almond juice, uh, almond milk um, the other night, and I just mixed it in water. Just do like tea out of it? I just made it's actually good in water. Yeah. It's like uh, tea. I, like I it haven't done water. that. I haven't done yeah. that yet. Yeah, I thought, you know, because you guys know me in supplements. I don't give a shit. I'll, I'll take it dry. But I said, let me try it in hot water. It's like a warm pumpkin spice tea. Uh, mm -hmm. But oh, anyway, I've been drinking it consistently, and I, I notice less inflammation. I notice I sleep better. Well, yeah, Courtney and I have been using that just to de-stress, and I actually had some last night because of like the fly in between and just like carrying all this mm. adrenaline with me. Uh, so, yeah, I did that because that's one of those things that does help me calm down and just start to kind of – you know, chill out before bed. Yeah. Speaking of before bed, uh, I watched a new series on Netflix. I watched the first episode, Midnight Mass. Have you guys? Uh, What's heard that? Of no, I haven't uh, seen scary, that. Scary, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, it's a little scary. Yeah, Adam. <laughs> so Adam's gotta, already out. It's not yeah. that scary. Okay, so did I'm you ever still watch? For you to bring something good. So. Did you ever watch The Haunting of Hill House? No. No. Even after did, everybody dude. told you it was so good, it's so good. Oh. It's not uh, that dude. scary. It's not. It's not. It's not that. Jump not a few that times. scared is that I just have no interest in that. It's like, I bet if you watched it, you would like it. Maybe it's really well made and written. Maybe anyway, Midnight Mass. I only watched the first episode. Looks like it's going to be fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be really good. Same writers and everything. So yeah. I'll tell you guys all about it. You okay. need a cosign before I watch it for sure. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. I said you need a fucking cosign before I watch dude, something that you have Yeah, you got to start building it back up, I think, with Adam <laughs> and Doug. But yeah. you know what? I'm still in, Sal. I'll give it a whirl. Yeah. What, what, what do you guys, you guys were talking about a show earlier. That yeah. Uh, Foundation is one of those I've been excited about uh, the whole time. And I guess like over the weekend it launched and I haven't got a chance to watch it yet. I'm like so antsy to watch it. I don't want anybody to tell me anything. Yeah, you'll be excited. It's got three episodes already so you can watch it. I started it, but I actually was doing something else and quickly realized like, oh, this is going to be one of those shows that there's going to be lots of character development and I got to be paying attention because they're using words and terms, yeah. like talking about stuff that I'm not familiar with. I'm like, okay, I'll watch this another time so it looks i mean graphically and it's only on apple huh? uh -huh. i can't watch it any other yeah, can i order apple. it on amazon or anything no god i gotta send it for something else now yeah <laughs> well they do they put a lot of money into this thing so i mean i uh, yeah, I, I expect they're just going to keep it on that platform. Mm. I'm watching uh, Clickbait right now, which is pretty good. So I'm – how far am I into that right now? I'm a, I'm a handful of episodes into it right now, and it's got me sucked into it. I say four or five episodes into it. Have you got to the third season of Sex Education yet? I know you were on the second season. No, oh, yeah. I have, yeah. No, I haven't. I'm like midway through watching Have you been watching it? Yeah. Hilarious. It's, it's yeah. pretty funny. It's really, it's really good, dude. Yeah, it's I, a, it's I a thought good it's show. You know it's what a, they do in that too is they – and I know, I mean – they throw every single possible type of individual in this yeah. on purpose. So you like you have like a non-binary person, and of course, you know, gay people and straight, but whatever. Yeah. But the way they do it is actually quite smart. They don't make a huge necessarily big deal about things. They're just kids kind of figuring yeah, it out. Yeah, and there's the one relationship. So there's the main character, Otis, and his best friend. I can't remember his name. It's the Nigerian kid mm -hmm. who's like very flamboyantly gay. Yeah. 
but they show their friendship very genuinely. I really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not a big deal, and they're that's and why, that's what makes it different. Yeah. you know like what? You know what else genuine. is? Do you got either one of you guys watch Morning Show? No, yeah. I know what you're talking about though. You, you watch Morning yeah. Show? Are you are you up to date on the season? Not yet, but yeah. getting, getting there. So I think they do a like I Katrina and I were just talking about this because we were we're on the new season just got released and so we're we're up to date on that and they do a really good job of addressing uh, the kind of political climate and both sides without feeling like they have a buy it. Like you 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 feel like they do a good job of developing a character on on each side. That maybe you might gravitate more to, but it and they're more like they're all likable. Yes, okay, and so they're all right. very likable. So it's uh, it's really well done. Where normally, like the the point you're making with sex education, I feel like you watch a show and it's like quickly the way they present a position or a character, yeah. I can tell right away. Like, oh, okay, that's this their an their bias. Or something here, but yeah. when I'm wrapped into a show and maybe I think they have a bias this way, but then all of a sudden they counter that with another character that's very likable, and you go, oh shit! Like, yeah. I can't see where they're coming from. I I really appreciate that. more than I ever have before. I don't think I ever really paid attention to that so mm -hmm. much. But like older shows, mm -hmm. like kind of like either their political view or where where their bias is. Versus the way these guys are riding is, it, I feel like it's really well balanced, yeah. and it's just a nice way to watch uh, a show like that. Yeah, I appreciate that too. Oh, uh, one quick thing: a study came out on uh, muscle mass and COVID, and they found significant reduction uh, it, it, that was connected to the amount of muscle mass you have and severe uh, COVID or hospitalization. So hmm. more muscle. Far less likely. Just muscle. Muscle and strength. They use a grip strength. As in it's test. more protective. Yes, very protective. I mean, now, that's obvious. That's, I was just going to say, come on, this is kind of like a- Yeah, but people need to hear that. Trust they do. me, I was around people this weekend that so, need to hear that. That's yeah. so crazy to me that you would need to hear that, though, because in order for you to build, the, the more muscle you build in the frame, the more you have to be dialed in nutritionally and more you more often that you have. You, you can't just build, you're not going to just build muscle out of thin air. You're going to have to go in and put mm -hmm. the work in. So you'll have to exercise, strength train. In addition to that, eat the nutri nutrients that are required to build that and sustain that. So yeah, but this they 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 were just showing muscle strength, and I and you're right. I think it, there's so much more connected to it. But how many times have we heard like, oh, just because people exercise, or just because people? This is they're like, if you're stronger, you're less likely to have all these uh, severe symptoms, yeah. which is which is, I mean, obvious to us. I mean, I would think that's. So I think people. you could connect that to cancer and totally. all kinds of other things too, right? Of course, yeah. yeah so more I, to me, it's overall. kind of a very obvious you know, study to come out and say that it's like, I, but if you're, I mean, do you think that there's people that don't get that? That really, I do. Yeah. That's crazy. No? I do. I that's, think people don't realize like that. Like I said, I've been around <laughs> that just recently. Well, think about <laughs> the average person. My mind. If you think of the average person and you ask, forget like a fitness fanatic or a person that listens to our show, you take the average person, you say, um, you know, what kind of workouts will help you improve your immunity? Oh yeah, you got to do like running and cycling, and that's also true. But then ask them, do you think like building bigger muscles will help with your immunity? They, and a lot of people have no idea that just muscle strength and size alone mm -hmm. is better for just immunity and, and uh, your ability to deal with uh, disease. And Speaking illness. of that, did you see we had a comment on Instagram, and we also had a comment on the YouTube of people like having to. Every time we talk about cardio, I, I feel like we always have to get into this with somebody who feels the need that they're defending cardio and how beneficial it is for them and that like we're anti-cardio people no, we're not. it's yeah. like it's not that at all it's trying to educate the masses on the benefits of strength training and why that is a superior way of training mm -hmm. not that you shouldn't do cardio and we don't think there's tons yeah, of benefits adding it to your strength training routine appropriately you're going to get better uh health and yeah. better uh, but the truth is if you ha if i had to put them head to head and i had one or the other i got three hours a week somebody is going to move or yep. exercise and i had to choose running them on a treadmill or do or whatever mode of cardio you yeah, like or strength training it's a no-brainer no-brainer because yeah. you can get many of the benefits that you get from cardiovascular training through your strength training like, like the example i tried to give the girl that was going back and forth with me is go do uh 10 sets of squats with 30 second rest periods in between yeah. and tell me how how, how much cardiovascular yeah. endurance you can't you... elevate your heart rate doing that yeah the, the one thing that'll cardio will be better at is whatever the form of cardio is you'll get better at running if you do more running that's true yeah. but in terms of of overall health um, and even aesthetic goals, of course, but overall health, mobility, strength, organ health, cognitive function, hormone health, like in the studies now support it. Well, the it's argument they were training. both these people were making were the, the cardiovascular endurance. And it's like, okay, if you're, if all you care about is cardiovascular endurance slash health, 
then doing cardio will help that. Yes. And it will help that faster than strength training. But there's so many more benefits that you get from strength training that you don't get from cardiovascular. And the, and you can get mo most, almost all the benefits that you get from yeah. cardio. So why wouldn't you choose the one that is superior? Now, in a perfect world, yes, you do both, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, And I, I would ideally... even argue it's not cardiovascular health, but rather cardiovascular performance. You'll get better long-term endurance by training like, you know, cardio, but in terms of cardiovascular health, like heart health, they've already shown that strength training is superior yeah. for reducing visceral body fat, inflammation, improving heart health. They've already shown this. In fact, that's when we had Dr. Allo on the yeah. show, who's a cardiovascular uh, doctor. That's literally what well, he said. Well, that's the point I'm trying to make is that we're not we're not anti-cardio. It's more so the, the most people don't understand that about resistance training. They Correct. don't understand the value. And so our message comes out that way. But yeah, okay, in a, in a perfect world, my client does both. You know, yeah. that, that would be great. But in the context of overall health and also in the context of body composition, because everyone thinks that getting lean and, lean and ripped cardio is the best way towards it. And no. it's not, and we know this. And so that's why our messaging is always around that. It's not that we're, oh, anti-cardio guys. It's that a lot of people don't understand the benefits of actually strength training in the pursuit of overall health or in the pursuit of body composition. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, we have a partner, Live On, that makes some of the best supplements around with this really useful liposomal technology that ensures absorbability. So one of my favorite supplements of theirs is the glutathione. It's in a packet. You take it. You actually absorb it. So it raises glutathione levels in the body. This is a master antioxidant. But they also have a B complex. They have magnesium supplements. Lots of products. All of them actually get to where they're supposed to because of the absorbability. This is very important when it comes to supplements. And Live On is the best in the market with that. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you can actually get free samples. So head over to liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Cam Snade. Are you supposed to flex or te tense while lifting or just move the weight? Oh, so, see, it depends. It mm. depends on your goal and what you're training for. If you're trying to really develop a particular muscle or connect to different parts of a movement, you want to stay really connected. You want to flex. You want to tense. You want to feel those muscles contracting. This is more of a bodybuilder style of training, and there's a lot of value in it. However, there's also a lot of value in just focusing on moving the weight and perfecting your technique and skill to move more weight. This is how strength athletes train. Yeah. Both of them are very, very valuable. For example, I can squat. Uh, I can do a barbell squat slow my reps down and really focus on my quads, like really focus on the knee extension and the squeeze at the top and staying connected at the bottom and give myself a crazy quad pump and burn. And again, I'm going to develop good, nice developed quad muscles from doing that. Or I can get under the weight and just perfect my biomechanics and my technique so I can squat the most amount of weight and both of them are very valuable. If your goal is to train for a balanced physique, develop your muscles, be strong, mobile, all that stuff, I think you got to do kind of both of these. They're both yeah. important. Well, there's certain things that you can't do. Like, say, like uh, you don't want to be flexed and tense when you do like a, a kettlebell movement, right? Like you have these these mm -hmm. explosive kettlebell movements. Like a swing, you mean? Yeah, you have to be able to be, be fast and loose. Yes, fast and loose. Like in a, like Olympic, there's a lot of Olympic movements where you can't be tense the entire time through Good the movement. Point. You got to be explosive, tense, but then relax. It's all about the movement. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really about guiding and shuttling that force output in the very beginning. So it's very high emphasis on that concentric part of the lift in the very beginning and then just kind of guiding that uh, that weight as it as it accelerates. Right. So it's a totally different type of a technique. But yeah, to your point, uh, it really just depends on what the focus is on and the objective and the intent of the exercise. Yeah, it's, what's funny is when I trained uh, clients, I would do flexing and tensing with correctional exercise. And I'm talking about like new clients. So new clients come and hire me. When I'm telling them to flex and tense a muscle, it's when I'm doing correctional exercise and trying to get them to feel certain muscles and connect to certain parts of a movement. But then when I would teach them traditional exercises, I never said, hey, while you're squatting, I want you to really feel it in your glutes. That didn't happen until later. It was more like, let's perfect the skill of the squat. Let's perfect the skill of a press. Let's perfect the skill of a, of a deadlift. 
And then later, when they got the skill down, and I could see that they were squatting well and doing all, all you know, and deadlifting well and all that stuff. Then, when there were areas they wanted to focus on, I would say, you know, squeeze your glutes here, focus on your quads there. Uh, so it is; they're both very valuable, and it's funny how there's like two camps. Like, which one do I do? I mean, no, I there. actually train the op. I actually train more less about the movement and more about keeping tension throughout the movement. Like, so I, I guess it's the bodybuilder esque background mm-hmm. that I come from. Like, that was I always felt like if I got a client to really feel the entire movement really, really well, then I could teach more dynamic, explosive things where you ask them to be quick or loose and then tight. Like, I find that that's a little bit more of an advanced technique to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't do fast and loose. I'm talking about just traditional squat, press. Like when I did an overhead press with a new client, I wasn't like, feel this in your delts. It was about your posture, your technique, and your form. Practice that. And then later, if they're like, hey, I want to develop more of this or that, then I would through the movement, then I would get them to focus. But you're you're right with the fast stuff. No, no, no. You, you can't sit there and connect to a kettlebell swing. You ever seen a bodybuilder or somebody who trains right. bodybuilding try and do that? Oh, yeah. It looks it's, really Well, that was the first thing that came to cringery. mind when we this question came up. I was thinking, yeah. like, all I could picture was a tense, buff bodybuilder trying to do a kettlebell swing. Yeah. yeah. And it just, it looks it looks awkward. It's because a squat and a lateral raise at that point. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it looks like. But, yeah, I mean, uh, there's tons of value in, in either of these. I think, for example, if you were to follow MAPS Powerlift, um, the focus is on the movement. It's, it's about technique, form, biomechanics, and movement. Now, you follow a program like MAPS Aesthetic, and it's very much about flexing and tensing and developing particular muscles. Which one is better for you? They both are. They're both going to give you tremendous value, and I think it's a mistake to only focus on one and not the other. I think both of them will develop the best body that you ever had because I there's a very different feel from when I'm squatting and trying to focus on a, a muscle group Versus when I'm just trying to squat and get better at squatting. It's a very different mentality, you know, going into the movement. Next question is from Tyler Mick Nutrition. Do you find a lot of people are OV overdoing it with diet and exercise? I see a lot of people doing twice a day workouts, extreme dieting or fasting, HIT, etc., or a combination of multiple things. I don't think they're taking into account other stresses in their lives, which can lead to some of these additions being negative yeah of course we believe yeah. this yeah. we we always bring this up yeah, yeah. i everybody overdoes it For and I, here's here's what i mean by that i don't mean everybody works out too much all the time i mean people that stop working out and are inconsistent usually when they start they overdo it yeah now overdoing it's different from person to person Overdoing it can mean you overdo it for what your body can handle. It could also mean you're overdoing it because you're doing more than you'll be able to maintain on a consistent basis. So if you're never if you never exercise or you have it for a long time, I used to get this all the time. I'd manage gyms and I'd you know get a a, a walk in. This is somebody that's interested in, in checking out the gym, and I'd ask them what their goals are and. You know, are you currently exercising? No, I'm not. When was the last time you exercised consistently, like for longer than six months? Oh, you know, 10 years ago. How many days a week do you th- would you like to start working out? Oh, I'd like to come five days a week. Like overdoing it. Like you, you're going to go from zero to five. Even if you train properly five days a week, it's, it's too much for you to go from zero to five and to maintain consistency. So it's the whole like, I want to get there faster. Overdoing it literally means you'll yeah. get there slower. It's, it's human nature. I mean, yeah. we want to get to that desired outcome as quick as possible. And, uh, you know, our entire culture is based off of that, right? It's like, well, how can I get rich faster? Yeah. You know, how can I uh, achieve whatever goal I have the quickest way possible? Mm-hmm. And it's just, there's no pill to this thing to really like accelerate that process. Like you just really have to put the work in. Well, I'll give you guys a, a less extreme and I think more common situation of overdoing it that I think most people fall into this trap. And that's just simply eating uh, eating less and moving. It's the it's like the most practical uh, advice given to somebody who is overweight. Oh, you're overweight. Well, eat less calories and move more. And because of that simple advice, what ends up happening is somebody ends up eating way less than what they probably should for their size and body. And certainly for somebody who's going to go start building muscle, and then they overdo the amount of movement. Somebody yeah. who's completely sedentary on the couch, wasn't doing anything, is all of a sudden doing CrossFit workouts or yeah. all of a sudden working out, like you guys are saying, five to seven days a week. So 
I think it's way more common than not. And, you know, a lot of that is just because the messaging that's been around in the fitness space forever. We, we always tout the law of thermodynamics and everybody says, okay, they just simp oversimplify that. Okay, well, less calories, move more, I should lose weight. Well, yeah, yeah you can, but Let's you have to do no, all of it together. You're overdoing it. You don't need to be doing that. I mean, everybody that I get, if that was overweight, you know, later on in my career, I figured out like actually what I should do is either keep them at a maintenance or even try and give them a surplus and actually focus on building muscle. Even though they came to me to lose 50 pounds of fat, I knew that where they were at nutritionally, what they were feeding their body, they were they're under they're overfeeding it in calories, underfeeding it in nutrients that their body needs in order to have this healthy physique. Mm -hmm. So getting them balanced out and keeping them fed while also now introducing this new stimulus was a much better strategy. And you just don't see that. You see most people overdoing the exercise and that doesn't need to be a lot and then under consuming. Yeah, it, the the right dose will get you there faster and will make it sustainable. Doing more than that is the wrong dose. Doing less than that is also the wrong dose. By the way, if I had to pick which one I would want a person to, if they had to go over or under doing it, I would say under doing it because then it's easy to ramp you up. you can build it up. Overdoing it's hard to, to back off of. It's interesting, right? Because I think people think that the most that they can tolerate is the right dose. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, I'm getting great results right now. I think my body can tolerate even more. Let me do that. That's still not the right dose because I know that there's more I can do with my training that my body will tolerate, but it's not going to get me there any faster. It'd be like going to the doctor and the doctor saying, you have an infection, here's your medication, take two a day, and you're like, I want to get this infection going. <laughs> take well, a whole bottle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 not, yeah. Yeah, what'll happen, right? I think of like like hard alcohol, you know, versus like a, a sip of wine or beer or something. It's like, you know, you give somebody like a shot, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to introduce myself to alcohol, and then you just go right to like, you know, the, the most condensed version of everything yeah. at once. How every college kid yeah. Yeah. drinks when yeah. they first <laughs> You know what that leads to? I just want to get drunk real fast. Next question is from Preacher Man Joe. Is there any truth regarding somatotypes? A trainer said that knowing if you're an ectomorph, mesomorph, or endomorph will determine what your body needs. There's a there's a little bit of value in this, but it's so generalized. Yeah, that it's really for marketers. Yeah, if you live and die by this, you're you're not. Look, most people are not a most people are not a pure ectomorph. So ectomorph is the Here's what they would say, right? Uh, tall, skinny, smaller bone structure, tends to be really lean, uh, hard gainer, right? Mesomorph, your athlete, more muscle, lean, builds muscle easily, athletic. Endomorph, uh, gains body fat easily, is thicker, bigger bone structure, um, and it's harder for them to get lean. Very, very gent. This is so generalized that most people are combinations of these right. different They're things. Like hybrids of whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, is there value in it? Maybe a little bit, but not a ton. I find um, I find there I find it valuable. I find it valuable, and I defend it because it's been I know trashed in the last like ten years or so because we've we've dispelled that there's these three categories or whatever. But it, for explaining something to a client who falls in one of these cat categories to un get them to understand their body more and how it responds to exercise and nutrition, I, if it you know what it reminds me of? Uh, 3,500 calories equals a pound of fat. Yeah. Okay, that is not, it's not that simple and there's, it's much more complex than that. But when I like, when I'm explaining to a client the over, uh, over consuming calories and under consuming, it's just an easy round number. It's just an easy way to get them to, to grasp that, hey, sure. listen, mm -hmm. that 500 calorie one thing you did is not going to even put a pound of fat on your body. So don't beat yourself up over it, like relax, you know? So I also think the same thing is true when I'm looking at a body type and they're struggling so hard to put muscle on, but then they can lean out really easy explaining them what kind of body type they're more likely and the benefits of being that kind of a body type and vice versa when they're the on the other end of the extreme when they're like man adam i just cannot lose weight yeah. for the life of I me look at but, something and i gain weight yeah i look at something yeah. and gain weight is i i find it i think i find it a good way to be able to kind of explain to people their body types even though we know that it's way more complex yeah. well, you, you know what's funny about this if i'm not mistaken the person who created this was a i think a zoologist i think is the uh, right term they're into eugenics yeah and, and and basically they you know what he what he did was is he categorized humans by the way i don't know if you guys know this the original 
the, the person that came up with this also came up with personality characteristics for each of these. That's the how same far person. They, that's what I believe. It's, I mean, that's not spelled right, right? It's somatotype, isn't it? Somatotype. Yeah, it's so, two. It's T. I believe it's not it's, an N. I thought it was an N. No, I think it's a T. So I, yeah. I want. I'm curious. Like so who, tomato type. Who who but created somatotype. that? Somatotype. So uh, look up his name, Doug. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. That's spelled correctly. Yeah, huh? look up it. I think there's a dark history of eugenics in there too. So. Maybe because really? people who mm -hmm. people who tend to characterize people like humans into category because they used yeah. to attribute. Also, characteristics like, for example, I thought it was a marketing thing. That's what I thought it was. It, then it was used for marketing. Yeah, it's, it's very valuable, right? Right, In right. Marketing, it's a smart strategy. Like, oh, you've been doing the wrong diet and workout. Oh, it's plan. a psychologist, William Herbert Sheldon, in the 1940s. Uh, so it, they they would also attach. Um, it's a taxonomy. That's why I said zoology. It's just a, a, a verb. Uh, excuse me, a word describing like characterizing animals or whatever. They would also characterize characteristics. I don't know if you guys ever heard this old stereotype that like. You know, endomorphs are people who would tend to be a little overweight, tend to be more jolly and happy. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard that? No. Or no. people who are like more like That's, ectomorphs, yeah. they tend to be a little bit more quiet and timid because they jiggle more yeah I, <laughs> you guys you never heard that no oh I'm yeah not, dude. i, mean, I don't know funny, if doug though. maybe knows that he's heard some of Wait, that I, oh, so did we is, was you, your you theory know. wrong then this person did not also create the other thing you said what because that's the, what we char were, the, the characteristics yeah yeah i don't know if it was him or other yeah, people it sounds like you made a leap on something right maybe there. Yeah, maybe I but i can surprise you guys never heard that before no yeah. i haven't heard that and you know again my point to it because i know you guys were starting to go the direction of it being not very valuable anymore and as a coach and trainer I found value in it to help explain things. And this is an area where I actually don't like when the fitness to, like industry loves to tear something down that we've disproved or like shit on something like the, you know, uh, also how many calories uh, equals a pound of, or how much calories does a pound of muscle versus a pound of yeah. fat. There's all kinds of stuff to, to say that, oh, that 60 calories is not true. And at, hey, at the end of the day, I think from the perspective of a trainer and coach, who's trying to explain this super complex thing around nutrition and the body and how to get their body composition changed and how to be healthy and all these complex things that the average person just has no clue about. These types of things I've found help me explain certain reasons yeah. why maybe they didn't notice this or they noticed that. I just wouldn't live and die by it as no. an individual. Well, what I think like, that, I wouldn't read this as I wouldn't encourage people to read this and be like, this is no. And, and I think that's the takeaway from this question yeah. is that it, you know what they did do, just like it's something that had some value to it. We, it's been bastardized and now used to market to people. Mm -hmm. So don't buy into the there's a diet and a workout plan specific for your body type. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not true. So if you know you you run into something like that, I think that's a bunch of bullshit. But for the average person trying to learn their body type and understand it better, I found value in that. Next question is from C Greenwood 32. What are your thoughts on grounding or earthing? All right. So this is one of those situations where <sighs> there's value in something, but the way that they try to explain it or sell it, I disagree with. So here's the, the theory. Patchouli oil out. Yeah. yeah. So the theory with grounding or earthing is that there are positive and negative electrical, you know, charges or ions. I think it is, and your bare feet touching the earth helps balance that out, and it produces all these health benefits and stuff like that. I don't think so. What I think the benefit is, is that the bottom of your feet nerve stimulus. There's tons of nerve endings there, and we are constantly covered in socks or in shoes. And th that part of our brain and central nervous system is super undeveloped. And when you take your socks off and walk around outside on different textures and the grass and the concrete, develop the muscles and, the, mm -hmm. and those nerves start to develop and the way the brain interprets them, it, that's, I think, where the health benefits come from. I don't think it has to do with this transfer of negative or positive, you know, electrical I don't know, man. I, I mean, before, I mean, I'm with you because this is how I would say that uh, probably five, ten years ago, but... I think I think no one in this room would have uh, thought that it was possible for memories to be stored in in tissue in, in your, your fascia. body. Yeah, mm. I think if you would have told us that two decades ago, we would have thought it was just as woo woo and just as fucking crazy as saying grounding or earthing. Maybe more. I think that sounds. They've even brought crazy. that up a lot. I don't, I don't know how they really have proven that, but they've definitely brought that. Well, up. Well, okay, and the way they and and what it really is, and the point you are making that I completely agree with is that you know this is what happens when. Um, you know, we haven't put the words 
to what we what they've figured out a long time ago yes. has value. Yes. There is tremendous value. I mean, I talked about on this podcast for years now of walking around barefoot outside and I absolutely do this grounding earthing thing when I don't call it that. I don't think of it like that. I think of it as taking my fucking socks and shoes off and walking around. That's what I think of it as and I feel the value in it. So I don't need someone to tell me the science behind if it is or isn't and that so I think this is one of those areas that we've known this for a very long time mm -hmm. that it provides value. And then there's practices that have decided to put some terminology around it. And then you get science that wants to come over and like shit all over and be like, oh, that's not really scientific. Well, that's like the problem. Qi, well, for example. Yeah. Qi has been around for much longer than talking about your core. Right. Well, no, that's a good well, example. Because here's, look, and you're right, because this is what happens. So here's Earthing. I'll explain uh, from a, a website called earthing.com. The Earth's surface has a virtually limitless supply of mobile electrons that gives the ground we walk on a natural negative electric charge. When you touch your body to the ground, it dissipates static electricity and extraneous environmental electrical charges that are on you. At the same time, you receive a charge of energy in the form of free electrons, and your body synchronizes with the natural frequencies of the Earth. Okay. Scientists are going to come and shit all over yeah. this. Yeah, that because, and, and the, the next step from there is like butthole sunning. Yeah, and, and that's, <laughs> that's where you're going to go. From that's there. a big leap, Justin. I'm yeah. just not that big. I don't know, no, dude. Not that big. What's his name? Bulletproof coffee guy. He actually posted <laughs> pictures of himself sunburning yeah. his butthole. Yeah. But anyway, so that right there, people will shit on because they'll be like, no, the ions, the electrical charges. No, no. Here's the value. Imagine this. Here, I'll give you a better example. Imagine if you almost always had. Thick padded gloves on. Yeah. Almost always you're handling everything and you're doing everything in, in your life with thick padded gloves. Imagine how less sensitive right. and, and less developed your hands would be and your connection to that feeling, how less intricate you'll be able to handle objects. That's what right. happens to our feet. Our feet Hot are constantly plates, covered. You yes. know, like like spiky surfaces, things like that. Like you're not gonna have the same response as you would if you allow your skin and, and your actual like fingers to touch it. Yeah. I mean, my son rarely ever wears shoes and I see tremendous value. In it. I don't think it has anything to do with the negative or positive energy around it. I just think that that's, we've, we evolved probably on this earth a lot longer, not putting anything on the bottoms totally. of our feet. Well, so to think that there wouldn't be some sort of value in us doing that, I, we always just assume just because we've progressed, you know, as far as clothing or, or like the ability to wear something is going to make it better. It's not going to make it better all the time. No, <laughs> yeah, and, and, well, I always take value too. And just like, obviously like taking your shoes off and walking around barefoot but also paying attention to your pressure points like you know how like is your big toe even pressing down or is it like staying up and raised up and are you compensating you could find out a lot about what's happening with your entire body by just focusing on that triangle of pressure points. i've been so fascinated with watch i watch max's feet when he plays and he's in a in a squatted position and he's doing things it is wild to watch how, because you don't see that when they have shoes, if you have shoes on, you can't see mm -hmm. all that stuff. And yeah. I certainly do not have the connectivity that he has. Because you can see just the way, while he's sitting here playing up here, you can see all of his toes be articulating, like putting, when he shifts over to one side, mm -hmm. this one grips this way, and then it flexes this. I mean, it's crazy. You wouldn't have that. Yeah. If you and, and think about the parts of the brain that are developed because of that, or the parts of the brain that are underdeveloped mm -hmm. because your feet are always covered. Right. So that's the benefit. So if you, that's why people go do this and walk outside and go, oh my gosh, yes. I feel so good. It's well, life changing. You're, you're waking up parts of your brain. You're making new connections. And you start taking baths and yeah. crystals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, even, even like to what you were saying, Adam, about your body storing memories. Like I don't know if the memory is actually stored in your body body, but I do know that the central nervous system stores memories, and part of those memories are the position of your body. Like if you were, you know, assaulted at one point, and so you create this kind of defensive posture, and mm -hmm. then something reminds you of that, even subconsciously, that becomes your Default. defensive. Yeah. So, so, and then if you you might try to work through the process in your brain and thinking about it, but it doesn't work, then all of a sudden a massage therapist comes over and forces your body to move differently, loosen up muscles, and then memory and then emotions come out. Like how many times I know your your wife was a massage yeah. therapist for a long time. I'm sure she had people cry. Oh yeah, that's common. Oh uh, yeah, caught yeah. right yeah, yeah. from doing that. So I again I think it's the way it reminds me of adrenal fatigue. Remember adrenal fatigue? Yeah. You have all this list of symptoms. It's cause your adrenals are fatigued. Then scientists came out and said no, -uh, the adrenals are still producing all the whatever. The reality was it was an imbalance between how the adrenals communicated with the hypothalamus and you know computed you know communicated with other parts of the body, 
that's what was going on. So it's just the explanation. Yeah, I, I think that's the takeaway from this question is that I think that uh, w w whether you subscribe to the terms grounding or earthing and what they claim to be the great benefits of it, nobody in this room disagrees that it's not extremely valuable yes. for you to take your shoes and socks off and walk around on earth. You yeah. absolutely should do And you should do that as much as possible. Yeah, and I think the best yep. way to do to start doing that, and I started doing this uh, a few years ago, is I don't wear shoes in the house anymore, which is also very sanitary and clean. So that's when I'm barefoot, is at least I'm in the house moving around, and I've noticed benefit myself. So look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you build muscle or burn body fat or just get healthier. Okay, so there's tons of guides there. They're all free, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal, and Adam is at mindpumpadam.